you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, we bless you tonight, Lord. Mm. Uh. Father, we bless you tonight. <laughs> Woo. What a father, what a friend. Uh. Welcome in this place. So welcomed. We invoke your presence. We can't do what we do without you. In you we move, in you we live, in you we have our very being. Thank you for your word. We cease not to make mention of those that you've given charge and overseers of our soul, our pastors that teach, that operate in all the gifts of your spirit. We thank you for Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar. Thank you that it is well with them everywhere they go. as well with those that walk side by side with them, that pray for them, that trust the God in them. We thank you for every member of the body of Christ that belong to this church. We thank you for our Grace Gang that is online, that is present. Thank you for your healing grace. Thank you that there's nothing in our lives that's too far that your grace can't reach us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the understanding of your grace. Thank you for the transformative grace in our minds. Thank you for the grace to restore our soul, the grace that redeemed our lives from destruction. We thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that there's nothing you and your grace, your love can't handle. We bless you tonight. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for your protection. In Jesus' name, and all in agreement, we say amen. amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. 
And I was thinking, it can't nothing. As long as you can get on this campus, somebody coming. The grace gang going to show up. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. He got you here safe. Amen. Thank God for those of you that are online with us. In Psalm 84, 11, in the Amplified, it says, For the Lord, the Lord God, is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows present grace. <laughs> present grace and favor and future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly, those that are righteous. Say, I am the righteousness of God. I need you to say it like you mean it. Say it one more time. Say this, I have been made righteous. Say it again. I want you to keep that mindset so that whatever comes at you because you're righteous, no good thing will he withhold from you. Jesus in 1 Corinthians verse 1 and 30, First Corinthians and Amplified. And I, I, I think I had maybe three or four topics. <laughs> but one that really got me, it was like the more I was quiet and the more he gives you things to read, I, I just started praising him for everything I was understanding. I guess one would be praising God for understanding grace. But it's from him, Carol Jones, that you are in Christ Jesus. I I read the Bible to myself, my name in it. (laughs) Who became to us wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation, and righteousness, making us acceptable to God. Say, I am acceptable acceptable to God. God. I don't care care what a human human thinks about me. me. I know know I am righteous, righteous. and I'm acceptable acceptable to God. God. Nobody can see me me. like God can. He knows my ending from the beginning. beginning. So he is worthy worthy of all my praise. praise. And sanctification, making us holy. See, everything about God in us, he made us like that. It's nothing, I can't make myself holy. I can't make myself righteous. But God loves him some human beings. And sanctification, making us holy and setting us apart for God. Say, I'm set apart for God. And redemption, providing our ransom from the penalty of sin. Say, all my sins, sins. past, Past. present, Present. and and future have already been paid for. So you don't have to walk in any condemnation. You don't have to walk in any fear. You don't have to walk in any inadequacy. You don't have to walk in any inferiority. When you meditate on who you are. And Pastor, Pastor Taffy, Do we have that translation in Psalm 15? Did she use the New English translation? 
that our future is secure? Let's look at it in, in Psalm 15. I, I didn't just read that verse. I, I went home and read the whole thing. Psalm 16, I mean. Let's look at it in the uh, King James first, please, and then I'm going to do the new living. Y'all blessed are the Lord tonight? Yes. You might as well be. He made you blessed. Yes. Preserve me. Oh, see, see, he sent his word so we can read it and talk to ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's, it's scripture. I, he always remind me, like when I used to be in plays in church, and, and they give us these little, uh, they called it, I don't know what they called it then, but they didn't call it, yeah, these scripts. He said, these are your scripts. And I want you to learn these scripts, and then I want you to become it so you can do the role. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? He sent his word. He said, now, Carol, I want you to meditate on this word. I want you to meditate on it day and night. It, this word is going to make you courageous. It's going to make you strong, and, and you're going to have good success. And I know it don't look like it right now, but keep looking at what I said about you. And so when he says to meditate on his word day and night, everything in this ungodly system is coming after our godliness to distract us. And so what we have to do is revert. Go to the word and read. And Isaiah says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Now, one of his details of prophecies shall fail. Nothing he ever speaks will fail. And so once you meditate on that word and you stay in it, and then you stand in the mirror, I, I'm, I'm just telling y'all how I used to do, still do it sometimes. And I stand in the mirror. I was talking to myself anyway. One don't need me lying to myself. So I started saying what God said about me till me started becoming what I was saying. And that's why our pastors, they keep drilling it and drilling it and drilling it because we've had such hard traditional teachings that even while we were being taught some word, we were still in bondage. We were still fearful. We were still in unforgiveness. We were still sick. And so now we get some revelation knowledge of who we are, and it's going to require us to spend time on purpose in these teachings. After Pastor did the, uh, here we go, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. See, I, I like those scriptures that I can read to myself. Keep reading. Go to the next verse for me, please. Verse 2. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. Thou, O Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth. Any saints in here in the earth tonight? He had this word written before we got here. But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Say, God delights in me. Delights in I, have his spirit I have his excellent spirit on the inside of me. The inside of me. Look at here. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. In that verse is where Pastor Taffy showed us in this scripture that my future is secure because the Lord is my portion. Good. Google it, Google. Go on here to verse six, uh, 7. Come on and read verse 7. Since an act of your will, I will. Say, I will. I will. Say it again. I will. Say it again. I will. So you have power and authority to obey God. <laughs> he put himself 
in you since you invited him in. You invited him in to help you live like he wants you to live. But you got to give time to do that. When you, I told some people in prayer, I said, when you're too busy to spend time with God and word and prayer and thanksgiving, you too doggone busy. You're too busy. And so Satan don't care nothing about you coming, hearing about grace. He know he can whoop your tail when you leave out because you ain't gonna do nothing with what you got in here. <laughs> I will bless the Lord who have given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season while I'm asleep. The Lord is ministering to me. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand like my big daddy. I'm holding his hand. He's holding my right hand and I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory See, my inner self, the Amplified Bible says, my, my glory, my inner self rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. That's why I started praising God. I said, oh, my Lord, all this goodness and all this you done. And I slept, started praising God. I, I was just showing Glory to God. And then that Psalm 84 and 11 came, God gives me grace and glory. I'm full of God's grace and glory. I am righteous. No good thing will he withhold from me. Oh, glory to God. And then you go, you start praying in them glory tongues. Glory be to God. Yeesh. bro. So now I get it. Ah, yeah, yeah, Kendiriosa. Glory, hell, and both. Shindy, Kikasa Tabra. Oh, Lord God. La, 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 baha. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Pastor gave us this. See, I value coming to church. Amen. I, I value how much God loves me. I was listening to, to, to Brother Darius this morning, how patient God is with us. My favorite for God is he's been long suffering with me. But he knew when I was going to get it. His grace didn't run out. Whew. But pastor said this and I wrote it down and I made it personal to me. And that's what I do. When he speaks something, it's not just a benediction. It's, it's for me to take that on out with me and live for the rest of the week. He said, may the spirit of grace be with me all this week. May what God has already commanded the angels to do for me, to watch over me, lest I dash my foot against the stone and I had to even stomp my toe. May it be very evident in my life. I I'm ready for the evidence of grace and glory to manifest in my life. May the doors, may doors that were closed to me be open to me. May God stir up in me. May God stir himself up in me, the wisdom the witty inventions, the understanding, and may his guidance and his wisdom bring me to the place of purpose in my life. See, people just heard a benediction. I heard uh, a confession for me to live out what God told him to say for my life. May this week be a week full of joy and peace for you, Carol, and let it be a week of ease relationships be mended, relationships with children and grandchildren be restored. May the God of all grace, say all grace. All I grace. thought about, uh, we, we use this name, uh, Jehovah El Shaddai. El is for strong strength. Shaddai is all sufficiency. He's the many breasted one. He's the almighty God. He, he never runs out of nothing. 
That's why his mercies are brand new every morning. His compassions fail not, and great is his faithfulness. It's why he's worthy of the praise. May the God of all grace pour out his love on me, out of himself on me. He says to pour out a love on me in an extravagant measure. Love. Say, God loves me, God loves me. Extravagantly. extravagantly. And now unto him who is able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless before the almighty God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. So pastor's teaching on this righteousness and you know I am brought near to God by Jesus' blood. The righteousness of God in Christ means that I am justified, declared righteous because I have been forgiven of my sins, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. This is both all of my past, my present, and future sins that I have repented for and of. They are dissolved in God's grace. I'm just remaining calm. I'm about to slap that bus through my... <laughs> that, that, it. Woosa. My heart, I was looking up this word, uh, established. And it, and, and it puts you in a in a secure place that keeps you stable. And that's what grace, man, it's, it's, it's locking me down, locking me in. It's, it's helping me to see his extravagant love. It's helping me to believe even more because he keeps doing things for me that I, I can't do. And it keeps me believing him because he keeps doing for me what I can't do. He is an invisible God, but he makes himself visible by demonstrating his love, demonstrating his grace, demonstrating his mercy, demonstrating his wisdom, demonstrating his strength. God will uphold us with the righteousness of Christ that we are established in. We should never be surprised by anything that that old already defeated devil is doing around us. We should never be caught by a surprise, by learning when it's God and when it's the enemy. Because there are things that God will do to help us develop. That's why I thank God for those teachings, giving us comfort in the midst of discomfort, giving us comfort in the midst of discomfort, and then helping us to become righteousness conscious will make us a friend and a child of God that I can say, Abba, I can call on my big daddy God. I, I can do Hebrews 4 and 16 because I, I know he loves me extravagantly. I can go boldly, confidently, fearlessly to his throne of grace, his, his willingness to use his power to get involved because he knows that I believe his love. Amen. Say, I believe God loves me. Say it again. Lord, help me up in here tonight. Listen, let's, uh, we did First Corinthians. Let's look at Ephesians 2 and 13. Let's, just praise God for his goodness. Praise him for. 
Man. I praise God for the pastors we got. <laughs> that they have determined to have a body of believers. I remember, I, I don't know if, if media, I, I had this uh, piece of thing that pastor spoke this back in 2012. And now I'm understanding, okay. Now I'm understanding that he said, help him. Ask God to help him get the gospel of Jesus Christ into the world. And I was going through some papers a couple of months ago, and I found it. And now I know how I can help him is to become a student, a disciple of grace. And for those that I come in contact with, the ones who don't listen to the broadcast, or those who not computer savvy, I get an opportunity to minister God's love and grace. And each one can reach one. Amen. And by the time that one reach another one, reach another one, we be a part of the gospel getting out to all over the world. So don't tell me God ain't called you. Yes, he did. You don't want to hear him call you. <laughs> He's still calling you. Say, I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. That one to everybody. <laughs> what did I say? Ephesians 2 and 13. Let's look at Ephesians 2 and 13. But now in Christ, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Keep going for me. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make in him of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came, look here, and preached peace, preached peace to you which were afar off and to them who were near. I'm so glad I've heard this good news. I get to lay down in peace and sleep. I don't have to let my heart be troubled, oppressed, suppressed, or in despair. I trust God, my Savior. Woo! Now I see why Paul prayed this prayer, prayer, Ephesians 3 and 14. Every time I read something now about Paul, it's like I'm looking at Pastor Don and Pastor Ted. Because that's where they are with this grace. That's where they are. They're relentless. They ain't giving up. They ain't caving in and quit. They ain't taking no wooden nickels. They ain't being bothered with this foolishness. Man, we ain't got time to be bothered with this foolishness. Our government needs some help. Our government needs some righteous people in it. I ain't got time to argue with no human. I want my relationship with God. So then when I pray, he said, his eyes upon the righteous, his ears are open and attentive to my prayers, that my prayers are to be heartfelt, they're to be fervent, my prayers are to be effectual, availing much power, that is dunamis, dynamic, and explosive in its working, that I can send forth the word. I don't know if I'm going to Washington, D.C. and meet them, but the word will. My angels will. Cheryl, I'm about to slap Lucy. <laughs> I saw myself kicking off my shoe. Okay, I'm going to be cool. I'm on, on YouTube. 
Okay, let's do this in the, in the uh, New Living, please. I'm, I'm, I'm full of praise. I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm just grateful. Some of y'all looking like you ain't got nothing to be happy for. I feel for you. That, that's, a, that's tragedy. That, that's tragedy. You know what I mean? You know, God, all this goodness. You. I, I used to look like that. I, I used to look like that. But when I changed my attitude, when I set my focus on God, when he told me, don't you look to the left, don't you look to the right, girl, you look right on. I got some grace that's some made a way for you. I got healing grace, saving grace, sustaining grace, providing grace. I got grace that'll make your life easy like a Sunday morning. They shouldn't have never let me get no understanding, bless God. When I think of all this, Paul said, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, look at here, unlimited resources, he will empower you, empower us with inner strength through his spirit. Keep going. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Keep going. And you may have the power... You may have the power to understand as God's people should. We should understand what God is doing. We're his people as God's people should. How wide, you know, how long, how, how high, how deep his love is. Keep going. May you experience the love of Christ through it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Keep going now all the glory to God. Say glory. glory. Say it again. Glory. Say it again. Glory. You know you'll have what you say. See, you, you, you need to be in your own house. Glory. Glory, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord. Glory. I thank you, Lord, for your glory. Oh, hallelujah. That my inner being is full of your glory. I'm full of your grace and your glory, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. God. Not all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we could ask or think. Come on, give God some praise, I'm telling you. That's why I did a teach a while back. I bet doggone if I'm going to let a fallen angel Steal my praise. He ain't even in my human class. He don't qualify to steal my praise. And we let him do that. The least little earthly thing happen. Or somebody do something to us. We forget about who we are and whose we are. He said, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then the earth will yield her increase. Praise God for his grace. Oh, I praise him for his grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. My heart is establishing God's grace. God wants our hearts to be at rest. He wants our hearts to be at rest and established by his grace. When we depend on God's grace, our hearts become established and we can walk in this God-given authority. 
See, I got it in all my Bibles. I got it on my phone. I believe that God is for me. God is with me. God is in me. My faith rests in how much God loves me. Grace is the unmerited, abounding, abounding, just keep on increasing provisions of the unrestrained, unrestricted operation of God's infinite love through his son Jesus Christ for mankind, especially for those who depend on him. I depend on him. I have his infinite love. Everything about him is infinite. It's in me. You know what? The greatest prayer I have learned to pray since this grace teaching is Holy Spirit, help me. You help me in every weakness. Help me in every infirmity in my life. Help me not to be deceived. Help me to live this word. Jesus was the word made flesh. He brought us grace. He brought us truth. And then he revealed it. And so instead of just trying to learn all the definitions of grace, get to know the person of grace. You can know a lot of definitions, but it ain't going to mean nothing to you till you get to know the person and the personality of grace. And that takes time to just sit and be quiet. quiet. Just sit. Just, just stop. Some people say, I got to slow down. Your butt need to stop. <laughs> like Big Mama said, get your tail somewhere and sit it down and be quiet. <laughs> you see, in this praise, God inhabits the praises. Praise help you stay focused on God. Praise help you stay focused on, on your grace and righteousness. Let, let, look at Romans 14 and 17. Man, is, is y'all getting anything? I'm, I, I just don't do deep. Deep didn't help me. It was the simplicity and the understanding that I could have, I can apply this in my everyday life. It's got to be practical. It's got to be effective. I, I got to know I can do it. And, and so this vision so fits my life as we proclaim Jesus the Christ. Now we're proclaiming Jesus who brought us grace and truth. I said, okay, Lord, I, I see where you're going with this vision. But look here. Look, look what the kingdom is. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what is the kingdom? Read it with me. For the kingdom of God. Put it in New Living for me, please. Let's read it together, family. Ready to read. For the kingdom of God it's not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy. And we walk around with this kingdom. I think in the book of John it talks about, and the kingdom of God is within a man. And when you meditate on it, everywhere I go, I carry the kingdom. I carry his grace. I carry his glory. I'm, I'm enjoying more and more of who he's created in me. I'm, I'm sincerely, truly enjoying my life in Christ. Amen. It feels good to feel good when good don't feel good. Because it's not good every single time, but when it's good, it's good. <laughs> when it's good, it's good. Thank you, Jesus. Look at, um, oh, my God. Okay, we're, we're almost finished, man. I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really just helping me, Jesus. Now, God will uphold us, the righteous of Christ, that we are established in, and we should never be surprised. So look here, look at Psalm 23. Let's look at Psalm 23. You know, it's big mama and them scripture, you know that. That's the one they kept that big Bible open with our birth certificates in it. And they kept it open on Psalm 23. 
NLT, please. Yeah. Or let's do the TPT. Mm-mm-mm. Whew, the Lord. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. <laughs> I thank God for all these translations. <laughs> he figured one of them going to give us some revelation. <laughs> That's what I tell people. You know, go find you a Bible you can read and understand. Find you a translation that you like and spend time in it. We have no excuse. We got this phone. It's got 100, 200 translations on it. But, but see, I, I thank God for it on the, on the phone. But, you know, when I'm looking at my Bible, CNN and Fox News and all of them don't pop up on my Bible. <laughs> Ain't nobody texting me. And so when I'm studying, when I'm focusing him, I, yeah, yeah. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. Oh, he's worthy of my praise. I always have more than enough because he's my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Keep going, sis. He offers a resting place for me in his, here we go, luxurious love. Not only is it extravagant, it's ex luxurious. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. That's why you have to get with him by yourself sometimes. You're going through a whole lot of stuff. Man, you just need to get with your shepherd. Let him restore your soul. Let him refresh. Let him do a transformation of grace on you and, and get you back into the place. That's where he restores my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You already done conquered all that stuff. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. You ain't going to be there long. It feels like a long time. But you know what keep you there a long time? Your thinking. You meditating more on your issues than you do. He gives me a way of escape. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? If you're doing all this for me, why should I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be with you forever. Oh. See, that, that's why we Psalm 91 equipped. Come on, Psalm 91. Come on here. We almost finished. My God, it's our meditation. I don't want to, no wonder eyes have not seen, because you're still looking at your issue. Your, your ears cannot hear, because you're letting your issues and your mind out talk the faith and grace that God has put in you. you, you you're allowing the outer to affect your inner, rather than your inner to affect your outer because the spirit of God on me is more real than all this stuff that's trying to come against me. I had to learn that. And the way I got out, I had to meditate. God enlightened the eyes of my understanding. Strengthen me and my inner man. Help, help me to, to see what I'm reading. Help me to understand. Help me to become this this meditation 
Help me, help me to stay in this path of righteousness. Help me to stay in this place of peace. I, I have not because I had asked, so I'm asking you according to the trust that I have, how much you love me. See, prayer is not deep. Prayer is just praying what's on your heart and believing God. He's already answered the doggone prayer. He said, why are you are yet praying? The answer is already in the earth. It's already here. And we're struggling. We mad and mean and all that. <laughs> anyway, Psalm 91. Let me go around, to, around about that fifth, fifth verse. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing, whether by night or by day. Demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil launched against you. Even in a time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. Listen. Obeying God is not hard. What's hard is us making time to do it. You make time and set time for everything and everybody but him. I was listening to the pastor the other day. He said, we want to get up and be with God for an hour. What got that? What about the rest of the day? I, I, I need to hear him on my job, you know? I, I need to hear him when I'm sitting talking with people never met before in my life. I'm, I'm listening to God. Can what, help me? I, I don't know. I don't know these people. I ain't been in their space. So I say, pray, help, Lord, help me. I love that prayer. It ain't deep. Lord, help me. And since all of my help cometh from him, the maker of the heavens, the earth, the world, and they that dwell therein, help me. You know, help me as a spouse. Help me as a, just ask him for the help wherever you need the help. And I was overwhelmed in that. Lord, give me wisdom. You know how to get me out. I got myself in it. I repent of the mismanagement of the funds that you gave me. Now that I know what to do with it, help me. Father, I said something ugly to my brother. I, I didn't mean it. I, but help me go to my brother and ask forgiveness. If, if, if I could say it to you ugly, I ought to be able to say it to you in love. Amen. Come on, two minutes. Pray in, the, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Come on, let your help come. For whatever you need help for. Come on, release most holy faith. That's your security in the midst of the attack. Come on, you release the most holy faith. That's your security in the midst of an attack. While you're standing on what you believe, you pray in the Holy Spirit. Give us the utterance for the help that's needed, for the healing, for the joy, for the restoration, for all that's needed, the spirit of grace. We release the spirit of grace and supplication. Help us. Thank you for your glory, your glory, your glory. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. It's for your glory, glory, glory. Help us manifest your glory. Rigish Namahai, Yakasa Nore, Ilimoko Sinima Akai, Nere O Godoro, O Baba Hayere Kera, 
We carry this presence of God on the inside of us. Rikish no mahai. He's worthy of the praise. Gito no ikonamashihai. Kikakateba. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and shout. Hallelujah. That's my preaching buddy. I can't watch her at night because I ain't gonna be able to go to sleep tonight. I gotta watch her in the day. She had you excited, don't she? But you know what? She's right. What she said that touched me is, God is not looking for perfect people. He told me to tell y'all, all of you guys are equipped and prepared right now to preach this message of grace even if it's one person. And see, what I've learned is, if you wake up in the morning and you say, Lord, how do you want to use me today? He'll send some people your way. He does it to me every day now. And do y'all know when one person gets saved, heaven is rejoicing for that one person. So y'all know that. We have enough teaching. We're equipped. We're prepared to take this message of grace throughout the world. And it starts in your homes, and it starts in the marketplace, and it starts in the supermarket. Start there, and then this thing is going to spread like wildfire. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise for that word. So listen, now it's time to complete our worship. Come on, y'all. Praise God. I'm so glad I understand why we give now. Y'all know I used to be a seven-day Adventist, and I remember they used to tell us, if you don't give, you're going to be cursed. What? We, we, what? And the good thing about it, like we were just reading, Christ has made his home in your heart. So you have a personal financial advisor inside of you telling you how much to give. So y'all know how this works. We don't pressure. We encourage but we do want to let you know that it is to complete your worship. You can worship God with your giving. It's a tangible way to show God you're grateful and you're thankful. And that's why we give. That's why he gave. He gave because he loved us. He gave us his only son because he loved us. It's a, it's a reflex when you love someone. So let that love come out of your heart. If you need an offering envelope, please, please raise your hands and the ushers will give one to you. For those of you online. The ways to give are on, on the screen. You can text World Changer Space in the amount to 74483. If you want to call your gift in, you can do so at 1 866 477 7683. And if you want to mail in your gift, you can do so at 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia 30349. And if you want to give via web, you can do so at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. And if you want to scan the QR code, you can give that way. Just put your phone up to the QR code like you're going to take a picture. and just send you a link, and you can give that way as well. Amen? All right, y'all, let's hold these gifts up so we can pray over them. Father, this is our seed. This is our worship. We're so grateful that you take care of us, that through all through life, every good and perfect gift came from you. So we sow this out of our hearts with gratitude and thanksgiving. For your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And I thank you for the promise that you will make it multiply and grow. So we sow this seed into good soil, and we tell it to go grow right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you may receive the offering at this time. We've come to the part of the service to where... The most important decision you will ever make is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There is no other decision that's as big as this one. A lot of people in the world downplay this, and I've learned a lot of people in the world don't even know about the prayer of salvation. A lot of people think that when you get baptized, that's salvation, but that's an outward expression of the born-again experience. So if you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, do it today. We're not going to make this hard, tough. 
Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we're going to make this prayer easy and we're going to make it light. But you do have to accept it in order for him to move on the inside of you. If you want to get saved, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, because he will move right inside of you once you say this prayer, repeat this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. Today, I repent for my sins. Come into my heart and help me get to know you. And I declare today that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for those who got saved today. Praise God. Praise Jesus Christ. Listen, if you prayed the prayer of salvation, the Holy Spirit just moved on the inside of you. You are a new creation in Christ. So if you just prayed the prayer of salvation with me today, text the keyword I'm saved as one word to 51555. Provide your name and email address, and we will send you a free ebook as a gift to you today because we love you and we want you to get to know Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all, let's stand so we can dismiss. Lift your hands. I declare the, the spirit of grace to upkeep you, uplift you, to provide for you in all of your ways. I declare that God's favor surrounds you like a shield. I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Any tongue that's risen up against you in judgment, I condemn. I declare no accidents tonight. I declare that the angels have charge over you and the spirit of grace is resting upon you. As you rest tonight, you will sleep with sweet sleep and peace. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our only wise God and Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, y'all are dismissed. Have a good evening.